Hebrew word for grace is het nun. It's actually the word hen. Uh, yeah, like hen, like a hen. Um, and you'll also see it like this. So it's het nun, nun. Okay. And the word means the beauty of the camp or um, the beauty of the camp giving to others. So the idea of grace, and we kind of looked at this in the previous video, but I'm going to cover a couple of things um, that give a little bit of deeper insight for the Hebrew. So het in the pictographical form looks like this. So it's a, a fence wall and then it's a seed. So this is a seed. And in Hebrew it looks like this. Okay, so that's how hen looks. And we see it in a couple of verses, but the first time it's mentioned is in Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. And we'll turn to there and see where we get our working definition of grace from. Normally in church, grace is translated as unmerited favor. So it's a favor that you don't necessarily deserve. But in the Genesis account, it gives a deeper insight to what favor is. And it also shows you that just because you have unmerited favor doesn't mean that it can't necessarily run out. So we're not going to read the whole story of Genesis 6, but I recommend you do. The story of Genesis 6 deals with Noah and how Noah found grace or favor in the eyes of Yah and was told to build a boat. And what's very interesting about this story is that actually the whole story gives the working definition of grace that we previously saw in our word study in the video before. So Genesis 6, 8 says, but Noah or Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahuwah, right? So this idea that he was able to receive the ability to fence in his seed or in camp his seed. And so this is before we have a physical camp of people or of tribes. This idea of fencing in the seed into a protected place was found in its action form with Noah. He was given an opportunity to then save or fence in or enclose his seed and that was done in the ark. Okay. So then you see the working definition of grace is to be brought into a protected place. So when you see the definition being um, translated in the ancient Hebrew lexicon as the camp, it's not talking about any camp. It's talking about Yah's camp, okay? So the idea of grace is then to be brought in or to be enclosed or the seed to be enclosed in the camp. Now what's interesting is that the camp tells us the camp was kind of set up in a circle. So I'm gonna use circles. So these are all tents, and the tents are set up like this, pretty much in a circle. I mean, you've seen different pictures of the way the tabernacle is set up, and then you all will still have a center of like a meeting or a place where people dwell. I'm not talking about the actual 12 trap camp, I'm talking about a picture of a tent. And the way the reason why it's set up with people on the sides is because they serve as protection of all that's within the camp okay so obviously the ark served as a protection of all those that were inside of the ark and then the physical camp serves as a protection for all those who dwell inside of the camp and then obviously yah's people serve as a protection from all of that outside of the world okay so then there's beauty in the camp so you see the definition for beauty the camp is seen as a place of refuge okay so Yah talks about this a lot, and I know this is a big argument and a big contention amongst Hebrew Israelites, this idea of refuge for people who are not the seed that's being protected. And Yah deals with this actually um, probably better than any of us ever could. So let's read a few verses. If grace means being inside of the camp, right, or being inside the protected place, let's see what Yah has to say about other people receiving grace who are not necessarily those who are the seed that are initially protected. Okay, let's look at Leviticus 19.33. And it says, And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. The reason why a stranger is in a land is because they're seeking refuge. 
Okay, let's read verse 34. It says, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Okay, so idea that you are not supposed to mistreat the sojourner because the reason why they're with you is because they saw the beauty of the functioning of the camp and they came there to seek refuge, to be saved. They're coming there by grace. The grace is that there is a protected place set up and the person seeing the protected place is coming in in order to dwell. Now, you don't come into the protected place with the family and not want to keep the rules of the family. This is one of the greatest negatives, I think, that Christianity brings to the table with this idea of grace, that by grace you can do whatever you want. If people within the house can get kicked out for doing things that are against Yah in his protected place, then likewise can the stranger. So to come into the house or to come into the Father's grace and to his beautiful protected place where he protects those that are his, you have to come in and be obedient the same way that the seed has to be obedient in the protected place. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 10, verse 19. It says, Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. So the idea that when the children of Israel first initially went to Egypt, it was for a place of refuge. And they were actually given Goshen as a protected place. So because you understand the concept of going into a land, because of its saving properties then when people come into my land you should you shouldn't do to them um the negatives that were done to you because obviously the destruction of egypt came because they mistreated those who served sojourned among them which were obviously the hebrews so when people come into my camp though you don't mimic the ways of the other nations when they come in to seek refuge yes there are rules but you don't mistreat them if the heathen or those without my Torah know how to give a place of refuge and how to, how to secure a place or to bring salvation, to create a saving place for people who are displaced and don't have, then how much more then should my people know how to welcome in people under my rules, laws, statutes, and commandments? Okay, Deuteronomy 26 and 13. It says, Then thou shalt say before Yahuwah thy Elohim, I have brought away the hallowed things of mine house, and I also have given them to the Levites, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten thee. Okay? So you see that the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow are part of Yah's commandment. They are to be taken in. Okay? Deuteronomy 27 and 19. And it says, Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, the fatherless and widow, and all people shall say, Amen. Okay? So when those come seeking refuge, and you do to them negatively, it's a curse on you. To deny a person refuge when they want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High and dwell peaceably within the place of refuge that's been set apart is not Yah's Torah. Remember, the people who didn't get on the boat with Noah wasn't because there wasn't enough room. It was because they chose not to. Now, for the people on the other side of that, grace has a period. Grace is a time, a space and time to do something. It's a space and time to get into the protected place. Once the door of grace closes, then there's no turning back. So you see it in the, in the picture of Noah, where he gets on the boat finally once the rain comes and the door closes, and then the people want to come and get in, but at that time it's too late. The time to get in is when the beauty of grace is still opening and functioning for all to come in. Okay, so there's another root word in this word for grace, and it has to do with the idea of getting forgiveness or receiving forgiveness. So it's het vav nun, okay? It has that idea of, of a pardon, okay? So when a person comes into a city of refuge or into a place where they're receiving grace, it's because they're being pardoned of an offense. 
okay? Because when a strength nation comes in, the natural offense is that they have probably done something against Yah's children. Um, the nations that surrounded the children of Israel normally warred against them or they were not favorable toward them. So the idea of being brought in is to pardon a previous offense. But once I pardon or I overlook what I probably don't know about you, because if you're running, it's probably because you've done something. If you're wandering, it's probably because you probably got kicked out of someplace else or you're unwanted or you're searching or you found something that wasn't right where you were. So when you come here, though, the pardon is we're allowing you to come in really with very little questions asked. But when you come in, you're under these rules. And the minute that you do probably whatever you've done where you were before, or you agree, you don't agree to these rules, you're out. So you're pardoned from anything that you previously had done. But when you come in here, you're going to be given what we, what we don't do here. And when you accept that and you're brought in, you can't then violate and then expect to stay in. Okay? So... Grace is to be inside of the protected region with the seed. And what Noah represents in his picture, you should read the whole thing. It really is a beautiful picture of grace because grace actually is to prayer and supplication and obviously pardoning and forgiveness. But it has to also do with a remnant. Remember, it was Noah. Four couples, which is eight people, who made it on. Very interesting. And these people who made it on received grace, but they also were the remnant. They are the remnant in the protected region. Very interesting. Okay, so this idea of grace being unmerited favor is inconsistent because the Noah would have opened the door for all those other people to get on. So when the Hamasimah came, he didn't do away with grace. He didn't need it but he did bring grace. The idea of the door or the, it's very interesting, the door, if you want to know what the door is, there's a video on the word. The idea of the door or the physical representation of the ark or the people then being the, being the place or the, the opening through which people can come in. The Hamasiyah didn't do away with people having to be with the actual seed or the family. What he did was open the door so that people can come into the family by showing Yah's law, right? And so it was to draw those into the camp. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. What does he mean by me? He's not talking about to him personally, but it means into Yah's protected place, into grace, into the place where you can come in and not have to deal with the wrath and destruction of the Father that is coming on everybody who's not within the camp, okay? And so refusal then is also going to happen. And so the Hamasiah actually tells us about this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. It says, but as the days of Noah, so we're looking at the days of Noah where there was actually destruction coming and Yah puts the people into a grace place, right? Or into a protected place. He says, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, they were, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So this idea that if you don't get into the protected place, which is the place where Yah has set up to protect his seed, okay? The protected place at this time is with the family of the faithful. You have to enter in through the door, right? And the door is the word of Yah. You're gonna enter in through the Dalit, okay? Dalit actually is very interesting because the Dalit is the fourth Hebrew letter. And actually the cool thing about the Dalit is it actually represents the tribe of Judah. That's a whole nother thing. We'll get into that. So you have to enter in through the Dalit and through the Dalit or into, through the word, that's how you get in. Scripture says that any man who enter not in through the door or through the gate is a thief and a robber. So the protected place is protected by a fence or it's protected by the camp. You can't come to the father without coming into the camp. Any man who tries to get grace or come into the family or into the protected region and doesn't come through the door or the Dalit through his people, 
then that man is a thief or a robber. I wasn't going to touch on this fourth tribe being Judah, but I am. Because Judah represents the, the fourth tribe of the door. And the Hamasiach, obviously the representative of Judah. There are a lot of people who are Jewish or Messianic or Jews for Jesus. And some people who keep Torah. Who have rejected a portion of Yah's people. And don't understand that one portion of Yah's people is set aside as pretty much a stumbling block. Hamasiach represents the tribe of Judah. And right now people are denying the people in America who represent the tribe of Judah or the southern kingdom of Judah, I should say, to be more accurate, and his other people around the country, but specifically Judah, who has been put as a mouthpiece for his people. They're rejecting them, and you're rejecting the door. To reject the people of Yah, who he has chose to be his mouthpiece in this last day, and who he has put on a platform in order to draw people to him, is to reject the door. You can't keep Torah and reject Yah's people, because the grace is being brought into the fold with his people, even though you have offended them. Jonah had a problem with this. <laughs> and a lot of Hebrews have a problem with this. But the issue is, you have to admit that you've done wrong to his people in order to be brought in. And that's the idea of a pardon. You're being pardoned of what you've done before and you're coming in under this set of rules. But if you don't want to be pardoned, then you can't come in. And so this idea of coming into grace or a protected region also has to do with dealing with the fact that his people have been disenfranchised and then coming into this family through the door in a front facing way saying we're going to keep and keep all the commandments the same way that you are and then as a hebrew we are not supposed to defraud these people of this opportunity knowing that we also have been brought in to yah's protected place and we're